Hey folks, this video is about materials, processes, and techniques with wet media such as watercolor, gouache, and ink. Here's an assortment of materials that will work well with this art form. I'd recommend by starting with the basics and then building your collection. All you really need is paint and brushes and some water and paper. That's about it. But you can get fancy and get palettes and fancy rags and spray bottles if you want. But yeah, just stick with the essentials and practice. I like working in a comfortable area with plenty of space to lay out materials. I tend to keep the water away from my dominant hand so I don't accidentally knock it over. So when starting out I usually wash out the palette with a rag and some water and I dry everything really well. The big idea when working with water based material is that you activate the paint with water and then you apply that solution to the paper. So in this segment. Um, the process that I use to create different warm and cool grays is dependent upon how much of one I mix into the other. So for instance, if I want to make my gray warmer, I'll add in more brown. And then if I want to make a cooler gray, I'll go and add more blue. Give that a try. It's pretty fun and you get some beautiful results. This portion of the video will focus on techniques for applying the paint. Try to think of this as painting on a dry or a wet surface. The results you get are going to differ depending on what that surface feels like. When you lay down some water on the paper and then you follow up with some paint, you get this really cool bleeding effect. A lot of times artists call this wet on wet because you're putting wet paint on wet paper. Anyways, it's really challenging to control, but you can get some really good effects with it. You can also paint directly from the palette onto the paper. However, I really like to teach my students to mix their paint with a bunch of water in order to get various tones. You can get a really solid blue by mixing in just a little bit of water and a lot of that paint. And then you can also go transfer that color to another one of the wells in your palette and you can continually water it down. And by making a number of these mixtures of water versus paint, you're going to give yourself a lot of different options. So that's kind of it. You just need to teach yourself how much paint and water to use and you got to figure out the best way to get it onto the actual paper. So now I want to talk about using some of the gouache paint. Um, it's, it's a really fun material to use. I like the results that it produces. It goes on the same way, even though it's a little bit thicker. And um, you know, the, the appearance is pretty. One other thing that I like about gouache is you could take a really light tone. So you can take like yellow or like a light orange and paint it on top of something dark, like a blue, and it will cover that. That doesn't really happen with just pure watercolor paint. All right, one more medium to add to the list. Let's talk about ink or ink wash. Um, so make sure you take it easy with this stuff because it does not wash out of clothing. Um, and also note, a little goes a really long way. This material works really well when you make different mixtures by adding in water. Um, you can water it down and then get a full range of tones and then you apply it to the paper in the same manner that you would with watercolor paint. Um, you can also paint wet on wet. You can paint directly with the ink onto the paper and uh, you know you can layer this stuff as well. Uh, all of the stuff that I said with the previous materials works in the same way so really you should just try to experiment and figure out how this stuff works. Uh, one last thing to consider is with all of these water-based medias I really love to work from the lightest tone to dark because it gives you a lot more control over your materials. And finally, don't forget to wash your brushes. Stand them up, don't leave them bristle down because they're not gonna hold paint. You know, dump all that water, rinse everything out. When you wash your palette, make sure it's pointed away from your body so that way it doesn't splash and ruin your clothing. And then I'll just end this video by doing a quick talk over of a 10 minute quick sketch. 
All right, so one of my favorite students in the whole wide world has this really cool line of characters, and this is one of her characters, so here I am. I'm going to draw it. <laughs> so again, 10-minute quick sketch, and what I'm doing right now is I'm getting those skin tones down. I'm mixing blue with the brown so I can get a nice, cool gray, and the, the big idea with all of this water media stuff is that you... I recommend that you just go and paint one area at a time and while you're waiting for that first area to dry you go paint something else so notice I did the skin tone and it's changed colors and it's really become flattened then I moved on to the hoodie then I moved on to the mouth then I went and did the shadows like the whole idea is you you need to be patient let it cook let this stuff dry and you can test your colors and you just want to cover and fill everything whether you're doing wet on wet wet on dry uh, you know that doesn't matter you just you want to let the material do its thing now I'm gonna go in and layer in additional colors as needed while I'm waiting for the character to dry I'll go in and paint the background and then eventually what I'll do is I'll go in and add some of those details like in a moment I'll break out some of the the ink wash and I'll use a really sharp narrow brush to be able to go and paint in those details but you know like you just you gotta figure out which process and technique you wanna use and you wanna figure out how you can develop a process that matches your style as you try to go and apply this material um, yeah hope that was helpful <laughs> alright guys do me a favor go give this a shot thank you for watching bye bye